Hello my Sock Universe, what a wild weekend did we have and there's so much to talk about. We had Le Classique in France, we had Arsenal against Liverpool and of course we had El Clasico and so much more. So let's dig right into it and we'll start of course in Spain. What a crazy classical did we see yesterday evening. I mean, this was a, a game of two halves and at the halftime, the final score of a 4-0 win for Barca was not in the cards, let's face it. Ahead of the game, all the talk was about Barcelona's high line and how the quick Mbappé and Vinny Jr. will exploit the spaces behind that one. Well. They didn't really, because they were put offside so many times, which on one side you have to say, how can they stay onside? And B, Bravo Barca. Bravo Barca for playing such a great offside trap reminded me very much of the Milan of the late 80s and early 90s, where they also were all in lockstep. Really great stuff. And if Barcelona came through, they were misfiring. I mean, there were bad misses by Vinny Jr. and I think also one by Bellingham, where you really would think they should get the ball onto the goal. Barcelona were in the game, I felt, for the first 20 minutes. It was rather open, but then it was always Real Madrid seemed more threatening. However, as I said, they were all offside. And Mbappé call was, of course, called off for an offside. He would have loved to have that one. At halftime, it was kind of, yeah, one time they will stay onside. No. Nope. The one that stood on side was Lewandowski, who was sent deep by Casado in the 54th minute and then was one-on-one -on -one with Lunin and could slot it home. And just two minutes later, it was a really nice attacking move where then Balde whips one in and Lewandowski completely forgotten between Militao and Rüdiger heads it in. It's 2-0 Barca. At that moment, you know, you were not sure is the game settled, but this was a huge shock for Real Madrid. They had to come back. And for the next 20 minutes or so, I would argue that the game was wide open in the sense that whoever gets the goal he will either seal the game in the case of Barca or will get Real Madrid very much back into the game and it was all there. Mbappé of course scored another offside goal. They had their chances but then of course the biggest one fell to Lewandowski who should have had a hat-trick. I mean missing on short range and hitting at the post and then there was another one as well. In the end then it's a deep ball via Rafinha onto Lamin Yamal who takes it with one foot and slots it home with the second one. Love that goal. 3-0. Game settled in the 77th minute and gets even worse. Inigo Martinez. Another deep ball and Rafinha runs through on goal and nicely then lops even the goalkeeper. Beautiful goal. I think this was the pick of the bunch. And again, Barcelona win big at the Bernabeu as they have done so often in the past 15-20 years. It's really staggering how often this happened and the big streak of Real Madrid not losing games is also over. I think after 42 games in the league that is crazy game maybe not a classic classico but one that we'll be talking about for a long long time well naturally there were also quite some interesting results outside of el clasico i'm looking for instance for Villarreal getting another win and it's again ayose perez scoring a winner at valladolid 2-2-1 Villarreal might be one of those teams that could be pushing for a top four spot this season. We also had Las Palmas getting their second win in a row, their second win of the season. Under their new coach, they're suddenly a winning force, beating Girona 1-0 at home through a Munoz goal just before the halftime break. And of course, a big one was Betis beating Atletico Madrid. Atletico Madrid really not looking good by a Jimenez own goal. This was one-way traffic by Betis who cannot score and still Atlet hit twice the crossbar in the second half. We also had the other Seville team, Sevilla getting a 2-1 away win at Espanyol. We of course had Osasuna beating Real Sociedad in a sort of derby, 2-0 away from home. And in a secret top clash, Mallorca, who had been really good this season, play a 0-0 against Athletic Club in the Monday evening game. To add insult to injury for Real Madrid, it transpired early on Monday that it's not Vinny Jr. that will win the Ballon d'Or, but it is Rodri from Manchester City, which caused, of course, the entire Real Madrid delegation to not fly to the Ballon d'Or ceremony, claiming that they're not being respected. Well, they're the team of the season, they have the coach of the season. I think this is really Mickey Mouse stuff. This is not a Real Madrid award. Is Rodri a better choice? I don't know. I think Rodri should have won it probably the last year, if any. But hey, it's a award that I don't pay much attention to, but it costs quite the stir in Madrid. <music> 
City may have only gotten a very paltry 1-0 win at home to Southampton. Early Erling Haaland goal settling the game and still they are the winners of the match day because they now sit top of the table after Arsenal and Liverpool only play out a 2-2 draw. The draw itself was quite an eventful one. I mean early on probably Van Dijk could have been sent off. Bukayo Saka gave Arsenal the lead. Van Dijk then himself equalized in the 18th minute before after a dead ball situation. Rice with him. Merino makes it 2-1 for the Arsenal. However then there are a few changes for Liverpool they get back into the game and in the end it's Nunez who sees Salah in the box in the 81st minute in Liverpool get an equalizer. Yes, it was a must not lose for Arsenal, but they probably would have needed the three points as they were pushing for that win. A major post-mortem to the Arsenal-Liverpool draw was of course that Gabriel went out injured, meaning the injury worries for Arsenal do continue, which might play a big role down the line for them. What about the other results in the Premier League? We had Forrest beating Leicester 3-1 away from home with Chris Wood scoring a brace. Then Saturday was a day of stoppage time goals. We had, for instance, a stoppage time equal by Evan Nielsen at Aston Villa to get a 1-1 draw. Similarly, Wolves were down 2-0 in the 85th minute at Brighton and still managed a 2-2 draw thanks to a Cunha equalizer in the 93rd minute. In the game of the round, the month, probably the season, Brentford beat Ipswich 4-3 after Ipswich had a 2-0 lead midway through the first half. However, just before the half, it was already level scores. The lab could equalize an Mbwemo penalty in the 86th minute and then Mbwemo himself a 96th minute winner. And another stoppage time goal came when Everton salvaged a 1 1 draw at home to Fulham, who had taken the lead through Iwobi. Beto, very, very late, makes it 1 1. And Oliver Glasner's Crystal Palace got their first win on Sunday 1 0 over a very lackluster Spurs. It was settled by a goal through Mateta in the 31st minute for an overall deserved win. Cole Palmer remains ice cold, giving Chelsea a 2 1 win over Newcastle. And finally, United should have been out of sight at halftime at West Ham. However, West Ham in the second half take the lead through Somerville. Casemiro manages an equalizer and then a very contentious penalty in the 92nd minute. Another stoppage time goal sees Bowen win it for United. And this leads to Eric Ten Hag, finally, I might add, getting the sack at United. Le Classique in France was not the spectacle that everyone hoped for because already in the seventh minute Neves gave PSG the lead and then a very rough hurried red card, I think this could have been just a yellow as well, gave PSG of course a huge advantage and then a few minutes later Balerdi with a really bad own goal makes it 2-0, Barcola in the 40th minute adds a third and the second half needn't really need to have been played as well. So yeah, maybe not the best Edward for Ligue 1 as PSG romp over a Marseille side that again are reduced to 10 men. PSG's win was even made sweeter by Monaco losing to Nice despite having a 1 0 lead through and ball in the 39th minute. However, just before the half, it all broke for Monaco. Gazan get an equalizer in stoppage time, and then just three minutes later, Wanders is sent off with a second yellow card. Again, a red card hurting Monaco. And then it's Laborde in the 71st minute that give Nice the win. Monaco's long unbeaten streak is over. And other remarkable results, we had Brest beating Reims 2-1 away from home. The game was settled early, Fevre penalty, Fevre also assisting Balde in the 18th minute. Okuma pulls one back, no Nakamura goal this time around. We also had Lille winning the derby, the other big derby in France against Lens 2-0. However, the goals came very, very late. It was a Danzo cost penalty. Very tough decision, I gotta say, that Jonathan David puts home in the 98th minute and then Bayo in the 101st settles the game. Very unlucky loss for Lens though. Ahead of a massive week in the Eredivisie, we not only get the Klassiker, but also the topper. PSV are already in pretty good form, beating Pex Wolle at home 6-0. 2-0 at the half, and yes, Zwolle were also reduced to 10 men. Pepe and Lang scoring. Tillman adds a third, Pepe another one, an own goal. Bakayoko and in between, Luc de Jong even missed a penalty. PSV still perfect, the awesome favorites to reclaim their title.
And in a matchup between the two possible challengers, Utrecht suffered the first defeat of the season, losing 2-0 at home to Feyenoord, Carranza in the 12th minute and Timber in the 54th, scoring the two goals, meaning that Feyenoord are the only other unbeaten side with too many draws. But they also have a game in hand, which of course is the Klassiker against Ajax on Wednesday. Speaking of Ajax, ahead of their big week, with Feyenoord and PSV begging, they beat Willem Dway. 1-0, early Klassen, penalty, not much to talk home about. We had also Twente running up the score, 5-0 over Heracles, which means that Twente are kind of still in the picture for some of the Champions League spots. While AZ definitely have hit a rough patch in the season. Yes, they drew at Spurs, however, they had a 2-0 lead against the go-ahead Eagles in the 49th minute and still only managed a 2-2 draw. Not much has changed in Liga Portugal after they had a cup break last weekend. All the top sides have won. We had, for instance, Santa Clara, the surprise top team, if you would like, beating Gil Vicente 2-1. We had Braga at home 2-0 over Farange. Then also the big 3-1 with clean sheets. Probably the hardest win was for Sporting at Family Cow. Yes, they had an early goal by Gonzalez called off for offside. Jokeris broke the deadlock in the 57th minute. Kenda and Inacio adding two more. Actucolio was the big hero in a 5-0 driving for Benfica of Rio. Af scoring a first half hat-trick. Two more in the second half. And it's the expected big win. And Porto also got a big win. 5-0 away at promoted AVS. This time it's Samu scoring a hat-trick. Porto were leading 4-0 at the half. Nico scoring the first goal. The Bundesliga may not have had a classic top match like other leagues this weekend, however they had a top clash between Leipzig and Freiburg, where Freiburg could have overtaken Leipzig, who were joint league leaders with Bayern, and Freiburg had a 1-0 halftime lead through a Rizzo Doan goal in the 15th minute. However, after the half, Leipzig quickly turned around, Willy Orban in 47th, Gertreuda in the 58th minute, after Openda assist, and Openda himself, after being assisted by Andre Silva in the 78th minute, gave Leipzig a 3-1 win, Leipzig staying top of the table. However, the headline grabbing result of the weekend was definitely Augsburg beating Dortmund 2-1. Again, Malen gave Dortmund a lead like he did in Madrid and then Claude Maurice just before and the goal after the half turned around for Augsburg and Augsburg actually deservedly won this one. Dortmund is an absolute mess and I think Nuri Shahin is already on a real hot seat. Stuttgart had more troubles with Horschnagil than Juventus in the midweek. They had a 2 0 lead through Undaf and Touré, who scored the winner in Turin. However, in a Chabot red card in the 66th minute, took a yellow card in quick succession, got Horstein back into the game. They get a goal through Gigovic in the 84th. However, it's too little too late. Stuttgart hold on to the 2 1 win. In Saturday night's top game, Werder Bremen and Leverkusen play out a 2 2 draw. Victor Boniface gave Leverkusen in the 30th minute the lead, and for a long time it really seemed like Leverkusen might actually not concede for a change. Well, that was until Marvin Duksch actually gets the equalizer, but shortly thereafter, a very unlucky own goal by Agu re established the lead for Leverkusen, who were seemingly the winners until Romano Schmidt, who was working tirelessly, yanks it in. It's 2-2 in the 90th minute and Leverkusen drop points once more. And after being humiliated in Barcelona, Bayern really needed to go to Bochum and actually score a few goals for themselves. Bochum actually could have taken lead, but then Olise and Musiala already in the first half put Bayern on the winning path. Kane after the half, Sané and Kingsley Coman add three more goals for a resounding 5-0 victory. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!